I want there to be something for those truckers. There has to be some type of an exception, some type of legislation that you can do for the truckers so that the truckers can live a normal life because they're underpaid as it is anyway. You need to pay them more. I don't understand why they don't pay them more. I was listening to Bloomberg and Bloomberg was talking about it and Bloomberg's very left-leaning and they're talking about how, why don't they pay truckers more? Like they should pay them more. You would get so many more people doing the job if you would actually just pay them. What's up, guys? Joe. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? I was about to say, what's up, guys? Joe Rogan here. <laughs> <laughs> I spent way too much time talking about that guy. God. Yeah. Jordan here. Dream here. What's hey. up, Dream? <laughs> Dream? I had a good, uh, I had a good workout today, so I want to show off the pump ski. I want to show off the pump ski. Do I look Jack? Oh, shit. You look, I mean, no, you're small. <laughs> Okay, let's continue on with the show then. Since no, I'm, not, big, dude. I'm oh, not a big shit. strong man. <laughs> it's just a you're boy big. thing, Dreamer. You don't understand. It's a boy thing, okay? We want to be big and strong. Hey, that's racist. Calm down. <laughs> what? <laughs> sexist. Sexist. <laughs> so anyway, I know, we do, I know we never start off. We don't ever start off talking about what the actual subject of the video is. But hey, subject of the video is your rights, guys, and your freedoms. And the freedom uh, convoy. The, remember the truckers, Dream? You remember us talking about the truckers? Dude, that's retarded, but fuck yes. I remember. I cannot believe all the bullshit. But yes, I remember. What is the bullshit that you cannot believe? All of it. Are you fucking kidding me? Let me yeah, just, it, like... The, the president was like talking about all this and then boom he has COVID he can't come out Mark, <laughs> he's Mark, hiding Mark. he's like hiding in a basement somewhere like afraid to even have a conversation with guys who drive trucks for a living exactly <laughs> you know like dude these dudes aren't like they they just they just want to work and the the mandates that you're that you have are slowing down their business because these guys drive 12 to 16 hours a day every day i think it's i think it's like legally they can only drive like 12 hours a day something like that but they drive all the time and they have to wait and then if you make them have to do covid tests if you make them have to do different vaccines here and there and have these different types of things that you have to show at this checkpoint they already have so many checkpoints and they already have so many things they have to work on it's it's hard to do that so now you're making it harder on the people who deliver us food you're making it harder on the people who deliver us lights. You're, you're making it hard on the people who deliver us everything that we have here. We wouldn't have any of this stuff if it wasn't for those convoys of trucks that you see on the interstate anytime you get on the interstate. Anytime you get on a local highway, you see big, large trucks with people driving them, men, women, either way. Because there's a lot more women now that are that are joining the uh, the truck drivers, and it's not just mainly men. So there's a lot, and I've and, and even with my courier job, my old courier job, I did work with an old lady truck driver, an old lady trucker, and uh, boy, she was she was a mess. <laughs> she, she was a mess. It was probably healthy for her to be stuck in a truck majority of the day. You don't want her out in public. <laughs> it's probably good for her to just be. No, no, no. You just sit in your truck and drive. Just just drive. Just sit in your truck and drive. But now we've we we covered the trucker protest dream, and you know that they did the GoFundMe, and GoFundMe kind of backtracked, and they were they made a million dollars, and GoFundMe let them have that million dollars, but then they made nine million dollars in donations, and GoFundMe was like, nah, fam, you guys are uh, racist bigots, and we're not going to let you have it. And you remember that was the problem in the last video because there was like one guy with a flag, and of course they see a Nazi flag or a, or a Southern um, Virginia, what, what is it? The uh, rebel flag, the, uh, what is it called? The, what do they call it? Confederate flag? Confeder yeah, the Confeder it's the Confederate flag. Yeah. yeah, the Confederate flag. But that's not majority of the people. You can take one, one thing and then try to paint everybody as that, but it doesn't make it accurate. And I don't think that that's accurate. I think that most of these people are demanding, they are protesting. 
And it's just like, we, it's not like we haven't been seeing protests all year long. And I met For last you. year. I mean, this is, we're still in February. So it's not even like that, that, that much here, but it's been going on. There's been protests. And it's been like, um, uh, probably like fucking 75% of the half decade. It, 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 we're, yeah. So many, so many riots yeah. are going on, and then we have a nice, peaceful, civilized, with one uh, Confederate flag thrown. Sorry about that. But here's the else. thing, Dream. Even, even with that being said, it's just a flag. It's just a flag. That still doesn't flag. take away the fact that they still have, like, okay, maybe they have stupid ideas. But that doesn't take away the fact that they still are trying to work and they're trying to provide for their family. And just because they have dumb ideas doesn't mean that that's any of your business anyway. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not, you know, like, like if they're not hurting anybody, they, they're allowed to be stupid people. They're allowed to have dumb ideas. And there's a lot of people who have dumb ideas. There's people who believe that the earth is flat still, even though you can get to a plane and you can see that, oh, no, man, there's some curvature to that shit. People still say that it's flat they still say it and they still swear about it so you're you're going to win some people but you're not always going to win them all you're not going to win them all and um so uh (laughs) it's sad that we have to go internationally with the news here but um here we go boom now you see uh you see that dream yeah, like trucker protests, a protester chants in front of Parliament Hill as thousands of truck drivers protest against vaccine mandate. And this is RT, guys, if you guys want to go to RT. How did it all start? We know how it all started, but the authorities are ta- how the how are the authorities tackling the protest? Now, this is what I wanted to go over because we haven't gotten to this point yet. Now, we've, we know how um, they're taking away their funding because they had GoFundMe or GoFundMe decided on their own, I have a feeling that somebody in the government told GoFundMe to be like, Mm-mm-mm. you do not give them that money because they ain't going anywhere if they got that money. I mean, they're probably just going to take off for the rest of their lives because they got $9 million. Uh, but on Sunday, Ottawa police announced they were collecting financial digital vehicle and registration, which would later be used in criminal prosecutions. So the police are saying, hey, we're going to go down there. We're going to get your tag. And if your tag, if your truck tag is down here, we're going to prosecute you in the future because you are being a criminal now. That's what they're saying. They're basically threatening them, trying to scare them. They're trying to put some heat on. They want to put the heat on them a little bit so that they'll leave. But do you think they're going to leave, Dream? No, they're not going anywhere. (laughs) No, I don't think they're going anywhere. Officers have also begun clamping down on those supplying the truckers with fuel with several clips on social media apparently capturing the moment when police confiscated canisters from people. On top of that, because people are like sneak, so they're, they're, like, it's illegal for you to bring gas in there now. They, they, it's illegal. That you can be prosecuted for carrying diesel gas to the truckers because they want them out. But then again, it's like, okay, you want them to run out of gas. They ain't going to be able to move unless you put gas in the car, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Yeah. On top of that, authorities have charged four people with hate crimes. Uh, see, you see, four people out of how many thousand? How many thousands? Four. And what were those hate crimes? But they yeah. don't tell us. They, they don't, don't tell, tell us. us? No. And are working with the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation to probe threats made against public figures. I'm sure they're like everybody makes threats against public figures, you assholes. Is Trudeau's, <laughs> you know, is Trudeau's government prepared to meet protesters halfway? So now it's like, are you guys going to compromise because the truckers are there and the truckers don't want to leave until you compromise with them? Are you going to compromise or are they going to be honking all year long? Because I don't think these guys are going to move. I don't think. Oh, going God, to... you said honking. The honking. The honking. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian government has made it clear it will stand its ground on COVID vaccination. Ew. Yeah, so tough. Good for you, Canada, being tough, tough on COVID at the sacrifice of your own people. Public Safety Minister Marco Mendesino told journalists on Sunday that the government had put the question of vaccines and vaccine mandates on the ballot. 
during the 2021 election and was simply carrying out the promise that we made with the support of the vast majority of Canadians. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who had to leave his downtown home last weekend, wonder why, due to security concerns, has branded the truckers as a small fringe minority. Do you think that they're a small fringe minority? Do you think that he's kind of like trying to make that paint them in a in a negative light? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, they got tens of thousands, tens of thousands truck truckers out there right now that are fighting for just freedom, fighting for what they feel like they want to have in their body or not. You know, and if you really think about it, probably twenty five percent of the people who are protesting, twenty five percent, maybe more would take it if it was on their own will. But right. the fact that they're being forced to, to take a shot or being, that's not sitting right. And that's not sitting right with Americans either. That's not it, sitting right with anybody. All, yeah. Exactly. We all collectively understand that it's not the fact of taking a shot. It's the fact of being able to be educated on the shot prior to it. And then making a decision whether or not they want their kids to take it or themselves to that's take huge it. right there too especially the kids yes the kids is huge exactly because that could be risky either way exactly hard, that's like, a hard one right there you know Sorry, it's just it's no no it's just like the flu shot like even that was like even you know that was an issue in the beginning and then they had protests about that and they had articles about that going on like oh these mothers don't want their kids having just a simple flu shot it's just it's not that it's it's not, not that being... they don't want them to have a simple flu shot it's it's like there's a risk with everything that you do there's always a risk with everything that you do so you have to consider the risks and don't act like there are no risks that's not fair for everyone and like personally i don't care whether you get it or not like that you know we've made that clear here we're not telling you how to live your life. And I don't want to tell you how to live your life. I think it's important for you to figure out how to live your life and live it to the best of your fucking abilities and live it till those wheels fall off, baby, because we only get one life, yellow bitch. <laughs> yellow. <laughs> but it is, you know, that's that's just that's just kind of where we are in the in the in the world today. And it's just fascinating because it's it's all just coming together like that. The convoy convoy had been relying on gofundme to raise money for their cause gofundme is a bad idea no more gofundme guys no more gofundme after that last story that we did dreamo with the with the truckers no more gofundme yeah it's pretty sad that's yeah. a sad company yeah. yeah it's a sad one uh but they're it's all political and it's so sad that majority of the news is about politics you know however the crowdfunding platform announced on friday that it would freeze the truckers page over concerns that the protest had become violent. By then, the truckers had managed to raise some 10 million Canadian dollars, 7.8 million, which GoFundMe initially promised to give to charities instead. But whose charities? You know, we already had this conversation about that, so I'm going to get through it pretty quickly. But oh boy, don't that sound, that does not sound good. But on Sunday, GoFundMe announced it would actually refund donors within 10 business days and not send the money to charities oh man that's fucked if you send it to a charity that they didn't want to send it to the yeah. change of tact was apparently triggered by some u.s republican politicians including florida governor ron DeSantis, calling for the platform Hi. to be investigated over potential fraud thank you ron DeSantis. You know what? He must have had like some extra time and he was like, what's up with these Canadian guys? All right. Okay, we'll, we'll go after them. Let's do it. He said, <laughs> so, I got my state going yeah. well right yeah. now. We don't I know. I'm so jealous. Issues. Let's go ahead and make sure that, you know, the whole of, uh, fucking country of Canada is doing all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole country. <laughs> the whole, we'll take care of the country. All right. I got Florida on lock. We got you, baby. We got you. And that's the thing, though, Dream. People are... Uh, People are, are talking about uh, DeSantis for president. Exactly. That's what I said. Bro could be president. And sure, I would sure. like him way better than Donald Trump. I would like him way better than Donald Trump. And I don't oh, hate yeah. Donald Trump, but I don't love Donald Trump either. I, would, I think I would like DeSantis more. The Freedom no, Convoy... Yeah. Yeah, the Freedom Convoy activists, however, seemed undaunted and quickly switched to a different platform. 
give, send, go. Yeah, good. Good for you guys. And, and hopefully that one works. Who are the critics and supporters of the convoy? Now, this is where we're going to get political. The Canadian Truck Alliance has criticized the Freedom Convoy, claiming that a lot of protesters had nothing to do with the industry. And maybe they didn't. Maybe they wanted to hop on because they don't agree with the mandates. And then it turned into something bigger. Maybe it turned into something bigger than just truckers. Saying yeah. that it's not just truckers at the protest doesn't mean that it's not valid because are they still Canadians? And are they still protesting? Yeah. Do they seem to have the same message all together as one? There you go. Media and Canadian officials alike have accused the truckers of harassing locals with racial slurs. Oh, God forbid, Joe Rogans. What are they, a bunch of Joe Rogans out there? <laughs> Disturbing the public peace with incessant honking and desecrating the tomb of the unknown soldier at the National War Memorial. But the problem is, any random person can do this at that time, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's affiliated with that protest. Just like the other protests that were going on here in America, and people were saying, oh, they were mostly peaceful because, you know, there were riots that were happening, buildings were burned, but that wasn't majority of the people protesting, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, double standards much. The Freedom Convoy organizers insist, however, that their movement is entirely peaceful and vehemently, vehemently deny that the war memorials were defaced and disrespected by the protesters in any way. Certain members of Canada's Conservative Party have expressed their support for the truckers, along with the U.S. President, uh, former President Dana, uh, Dana White, uh, Donald Trump, and Tesla CEO Elon Musk. So, of course, they, they kind of like, yeah, they'll put their, their, their little pieces in there. And then we'll go to Yahoo and see what Yahoo's thinking about the protesters. Twelve days after the protest against vaccine mandates first took over Canada's capital officials, there can do little but wait for demonstrators to go home. They still can't do much. They still can't do much. Now, Ottawa Dreama did declare an emergency over the trucker protest. So they declared a state of emergency. You're not allowed to give them gasoline, uh, diesel gasoline. You can't give them diesel. You can't give them anything. It's what? against the law. What? Yeah. As police concede they lack power to force an end to the protest, organizers have pledged to keep going for as long as it takes until Canada is a free nation again. A free nation again. That's I didn't funny. know that Canada was ever a free nation. Y'all always <laughs> seemed commie to me. I always thought that they were kind of like weirdo socialists up there. Yeah, because I mean, I remember like a protest going on probably like a year and some change ago of just them having to stay shut down after the countries have opened up several companies. Right, com right, yeah, right. Everybody has already opened up and they were still locked down. And I remember very clearly that they, that the people did not like that, but I never, never knew them to be, you know, more of a free, uh, slightly I didn't know it was going to get this bad. Yeah. I didn't know that it would get to the point to where Canadians were like, but fuck it. No, they're, like, they're acting like Americans. I thought, yeah. that, I thought we were the badass. I thought exactly. we were doing that stuff. Exactly, right. exactly. All right, the, the situation, or the, um, the tow, tow the trucks away. They, they want to tow the trucks away. The standoff has created a tough choice for local towing companies. Their heavy tow trucks, commonly known as wreckers, can ostensibly help clear the roads, but trucker Doug Rowland says many may be reluctant to get involved for both political and practical reasons. A lot of towing companies consider themselves truck drivers as well. Tow operators and truck drivers and truckers require the same classification of driver's license. So there is plenty of overlap between the two industries. Mr. Rowland, who is not involved in the protests himself, operates both uh, articulated lorries and wreckers. According to him, even a large to mid-sized towing companies might own five records at most, often at hefty price tags ranging around $300,000. So that goes to the price, to $1 million, to the price of tow trucks that can tow semi-trucks. Three hundred. That's a $300,000 truck, is a tow truck that can tow semi-trucks. And they don't have that many of them because they are so expensive for the companies to have. And it's not like you have to tow semi-trucks all the time. 
According to him, even large to mid-sized towing come. Oh, I got that. Further logistical difficulties arise from the sheer number of vehicles involved in these protests. Each truck requires its own wrecker, and hooking up a wrecker to a truck takes about an hour, assuming the driver is present and cooperating. In cooperating, but they're not going to be cooperating. So you're you're going to have, yeah, it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to tow anything. This I, no. I like this. This is a better explanation to why it's probably not likely that they're going to be towed out of there. Yeah. I don't think these people are going to give up until they get what they want. And I hope that they don't give up. God, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Dream. I hope that they stay there until they, they get their freedom back. Me too. I really need to I, freedom back. Probably just freedom in general at this general. point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For the first time ever, give them a little piece of that freedom, a mechanical engineer by trade. He says, such a stance could require each parking brake on the vehicle to be manually released. That means for Lori, the brakes need to be caged and manually backed off. It's 18 individual wheels. The airlines to the brakes might also be removed. There's so much that you have to do just to tow these damn things. Mr. Rowland further hypothesized that if the driver gets in the way, say he lays down on the road in front of his truck, it becomes a standoff. And the timing of that can be anywhere from 10 to 10 hours, 10 minutes to 10 hours. So it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to tow them. So yeah. now the next strategy would be starve the protesters of cash and fuel. And now we've already covered that with GoFundMe. And you know, you know how wonky GoFundMe is. Canada isn't used to protests this large, long and disruptive. Yeah, no shit, right? They're not. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> yeah, guys, no have fun with this. At least nobody's burnt anything down yet. You guys are lucky. Very peaceful. I mean, like, yeah, they raised the flag, but hello. They're doing pretty Hello. good. That might account for why Ottawa police apparently underestimated the degree of organization and extent of financing behind this one, says uh, Christian Leprecate. Leprecate? Leprecate? A security expert at Queen's University and the, and the Royal Military College in Ontario, the legions of protesters that converged on downtown Parliament Hill had received support through GoFundMe page set up by the convoy's organizers that raised more than $10 million. So there are many NGO, NGOs in this country. Basically, they're still finding ways to get paid. Yeah. The authorities are probably hoping the truckers, most of whom are thought unlikely to be salaried and earn wages per drive, will eventually pack up once they get tired and run out of money. But if they don't run out of money, they ain't going nowhere. So guys, go get them that money. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to support uh, uh, insurrection or anything. <laughs> Police have described the remaining protesters as small but highly motivated group. Hey, we already read that. No, they called it something different. Um, uh, a fringe minority is what they called it. And that's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds a lot worse than a highly motivated group. City officials have referred to them in increasingly stark language as occupiers and insurrectionists. There you go. Uh, it has fueled speculation that Canadian troops could be deployed on domestic soil. Will they deploy Canadian military troops against their own citizens? Well, guess what? Uh, here in America, we had to deploy our uh, National Guard and because we had fires flaming up. But that was very severe. And we needed those people to go in there and be like, hey, you better like shut the fuck up. Well, uh -huh. you're 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 hurting people you're like you're destroying people's businesses you're destroying people's we can't just let you keep doing this because you're destroying shit exactly but the sad part was is they were destroying businesses in which they were fighting for so which mm. didn't make any sense and was not organized you know had no organization at all but yeah right but that has only happened twice in the past century last thursday mr trudeau tramped down calls for military intervention one has to be very very cautious before deploying military in situations engaging engaging Canadians, he warned. Yeah, maybe don't. That's your answer right there. Don't even consider it. Not against your own people. Some Canadians want desperately for police to end the protest. Yeah, sure, some. Probably the ones who are whining about it. Ooh, I don't like it. It's loud. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're making a point. They're trying to make you, they're trying to make sure that you know, like, what's up. In a letter to lawmakers on Monday, he pleaded for more help. 
including 1,800 officers and civilian staff. He's made it clear that you can criticize him as a police chief all you want, but neither the law nor his resources were ever designed for this protest, Mr. Leprechaun. The security expert told the BBC on Sunday, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson declared a state of emergency one of a few legislative tools that may boost law enforcement capacity. The police force is now relying on reinforcements from the federal RCMP and the Ottawa Provincial Police. The OPP is the largest force in the province, and it has policed occupation type protests in the past, including on indigenous lands, uh, which is Native, Native American lands. Right, right, right. But do you think that it's a good idea for the military to be involved, Dream? In Canada, with what's going on, no. I, I yeah. just, it, it actually just makes it, it looks more, bad. Yeah, it makes it more funny. It makes it more, you know, it's, it's just comical. I think really that is. if you have the military dragging truckers out of Ottawa, you're probably going to get a lot of people driving their trucks into Ottawa and being like, come and get me too then. And I don't think you're going to have enough people to get, I think there's more truckers than, than you really expect, especially if you start, if you bring the military in. Now the police, it's a little different. Police are kind of already there. You can up their numbers, but what can they really do? They can't physically move the trucks. Like they, they can't, you can lock these people up, but the trucks are still there. I mean, I feel like they're just going to tell the semis uh, a good night story with a book. I like that's all they can do. You know, I mean, what, 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 what do they do? What can they do? It doesn't seem like they can do much. No, you could enforce to try to shut down protest, but that would be un-Canadian. <laughs> Un-American, yeah. un-Canadian, uh, said yeah. Mr. Luprecut. When people protest, we wait it out and try to negotiate our way out of it. So, so you're going to try. So he's saying like, it's the Canadian way to try to talk your way out of it. Try to convince each other to, to figure out a compromise right now. Yeah. They don't want to figure out a compromise. So what are they going to do? What, how, how, where, how, where is this going to end? Where do you think it's going to end Dreamer? Do you think that the truckers are going to get their freedom or do you think that the government is going to finally come down and the government's going to do a good propaganda job to where it can get enough support from the people because you have to have a majority of the support or you can't do shit. You can't do anything if you don't have people support. So you, you know I'm, that they have probably most of the residents in Ottawa support, but do you yeah. think that they have Canadians as a whole support or do you think that's why the truckers are still there because it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to balance because Trudeau don't really want to push too hard because he might piss off his own people. Yeah, no, so totally 100%. I think that the Canadians not only have, but I'm going to say majority of their own people's, like, like their own people, they have majority of them, but they have the United States too. Like we're seeing something we haven't seen from Canadians before. We've done it oh, for right. years here for years and we've been protesting and we've been like speaking our minds up and trying to it's talk like normal shit here yeah. yeah but then we see canadians doing it and we're like well you know we just thought we're they got used drunk to seeing and we, that at yeah, all we thought, we thought they like would get drunk and do hockey like that's just yeah like canadians. yeah so it's super cool to see them do that so i think they have majority of us too so like I, I really feel like they're confident enough because they do have all the support. I mean, they got, come on, they got 10 million out of a GoFundMe. And unfortunately everything happened with that. But my-, my That's a lot of support is, though. That is a lot of support. Yeah, come on. Especially when it comes to money. So anyone can say, hey, I support you. But then when you're like, oh, hey, like here's, uh, here's some money. I support nope. you. That's, yeah. that's bold. very bold because- yeah, because they really, they really care. And I was, uh, I when we were at Gettysburg, Dreama, there was a memorial for a guy who owned a newspaper. He owned the newspaper, but he also funded parts of the military that were in his state. Like he, he had a couple of regiments that he funded because the state didn't have enough money to 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 actually pursue um, and and train their own soldiers. So there's a memorial to this day of this guy who 
had money and donated that money to the military so that they were able to still and it's crazy because it's like you would think that the government could just take it like that and that's not how it works really that's not how it works you can't just you can't just go to his house and just take it i mean you could i guess but you know people don't really do that now you know but it's just fascinating because the way that it goes but my final thoughts are i hope that this isn't the last video of us covering this I hope that this continues on for another month or two to where you actually get some results. And you guys, at least, at the very least, I want there to be something for those truckers. There has to be some type of an exception, some type of legislation that you can do for the truckers so that the truckers can live a normal life because they're underpaid as it is anyway. You need to pay them more. I don't understand why they don't pay them more. I was listening to Bloomberg and Bloomberg was talking about it. And Bloomberg's very left-leaning. And they're talking about how, why don't they pay truckers more? Like they should pay them more. You would get so many more people doing the job if you would actually just pay them. But these guys do not get paid enough, man. Some of them do, but that's after a while. And that's after a long time. And this is still a blue collar job. These are still working men and women out there who are doing their best to do their best for, for their lives. Providing. They're literally, yeah. it's it's not even the fact that they're okay. So they're doing the job to provide for their families, but you have to understand, literally, they're providing the country, each yeah. and every country, wherever they resign. It's they're providing for the country. They're providing for several families. I'm talking about from just food or necessities that you need for a baby somebody somebody uh they're out of which with joe biden they're they're out of a lot of things now i don't know if you noticed especially coming with meat uh kinda but see, um i kind of kind of see that <laughs> things have dropped dramatically and he can't explain anything he can't talk he can't even speak english anymore i don't think i, I think guy. he doesn't have it language down anymore <laughs> you know but i really do feel bad for him when i see him doing interviews and he just has those blank old man eyes that are just gone and he just looks like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and he has to just repeat this shit that he doesn't even know what he's saying like i mean no, it's a scary thing that. to know that the president position doesn't really matter it's just a facade for us to vote for no oh, wait no, no that's this... not true that's not true sorry the presidency really means something that's why every time a new president gets in there they can make all these changes right because they change so much yeah. all they do is rhetoric they're just good at rhetoric but they don't change anything what do yeah. they change they don't you know like is life any better for anybody i don't know not better for me but no, then, that's never right i don't i don't expect anybody to make my life better so I, that's probably a bad example but i mean it's it's probably like gas prices lumber yeah prices. that's true <laughs> that's true that's that yeah that does make your life better because all i do is drive and gas is gone yeah no but like i i see what you're saying i really do and the thing is it's like they really they do that they just have this one spokesman it's a spokesman someone who can get up there and talk but unfortunately this time has opened everybody's eyes up because this guy can't even talk so he can't manipulate us in the thinking but <laughs> you nope. know <laughs> nope <laughs> you're not fooling me old man <laughs> no. it's true though you're, you're not fooling us you're not fooling us anymore all right guys with that being said you got anything else dream no no i think we covered everything we could y'all i think we covered everything i hope that i hope you know i hope i hope these guys stay strong I hope that the government makes the right decisions. I hope that we all figure it out at the end of the day, because I don't want anything bad to happen. I want us to find a way to meet in the middle. And these guys have a drastic point that they want to make, and they're going to make it.